While developing the third Ratchet and Clank installment, Insomniac was determined to create a game that would be totally different from its predecessors. With platformers becoming less popular, this meant a shift to a more third person shooter oriented game. And because Sony requested it, the developers also included a multiplayer mode. Finally, in November of 2004, 12 months after the release of Go Commando, Up Your Arsenal was released. Though again, just like with the second game, Europe was not a fan of Insomniac's clever title and renamed it to Ratchet and Clank 3. Did Insomniac manage to create a worthy third installment in just one year? Let's find out. I'll first take a look at what the made of the story in this game. You missed so much for the famous secret agent. Hmm. Shocking. After the events of Gone Commando, Ratchet and Clank play a relaxing game of chess in their penthouse when they suddenly hear that Ratchet's home planet Velden is being attacked by Terranoids. Ratchet and Clank defeat the invaders and are then informed by the galactic president that Dr. Nefarious is likely responsible for this attack. Not knowing who this mysterious figure is, Ratchet and Clank track down Captain Quark who is the only man who has ever beaten Dr. Nefarious. It turns out Quark is living with an indigenous tribe on the planet Florona and he has completely gone insane. After taking Captain Quark to the starship Phoenix, they use some vid comics to return Quark to his old self again. Feeling as confident as ever, Quark forms a Q-Force and he assigns Ratchet and Clank with the most difficult task while doing nothing himself. After infiltrating Nefarious's base and killing the Terranoid Queen, they eventually run into Cordy Gears, who turns Clank over to Dr. Nefarious, and this evil robot turns out to be a huge fan of Superstar Secret Agent Clank. Nefarious asks Clank to join him, but of course Clank refuses. Faced with disappointment, Nefarious creates Clunk, who is an evil double of Clank that joins Ratchet on his next adventure. Unaware of the switcheroo, Ratchet and Clunk go to stop Courtney Gears after she turns Skid into a robot. Just after beating Courtney Gears, Quark seemingly perishes after Dr. Nefarious initiates a self-destruct sequence. After a brief memorial for Quark on the Phoenix, Ratchet goes to Metropolis to stop a Terranoid invasion, where Dr. Nefarious unveils his bio-obliterator which turns all Terranoids and citizens into robots. But this doesn't stop Ratchet, who catches up with him in no time. To be able to escape, Nefarious orders Clunk to kill Ratchet, at which point Ratchet finally realizes that this isn't the real Clank. Ratchet defeats Clunk and reunites with Clank. The two of them discover that Quark faked his death as he is too scared to fight Nefarious. Realizing they are better off without Quark, the duo destroys the bio-obliterator with an ion cannon. Not to be outdone, Nefarious is working on a second, more advanced bio-obliterator on the planet Mylon. Ready to end it once and for all, Ratchet and Clank head to this planet and manage to defeat Nefarious, but not before he can activate the bio-obliterator, which transforms into a deadly robot. All seems lost, but then out of nowhere, Quark saves the duo after having regained his confidence. This allows the two to strike the killing blow and destroy the bio-obliterator. Nefarious teleports out of there as usual, but unfortunately for him, he forgets to specify a destination, which leaves him and his butler Lawrence stranded on a distant asteroid. Now that Nefarious is defeated, Ratchet, Clank, the Q-Force and their allies enjoy a private screening of the latest secret agent Clank holofilm. Do not even think about it. The story of Ratchet and Clank 3 is without a doubt my favorite of the original trilogy. This is largely thanks to the great dynamic of Dr. Nefarious and Lawrence who are hilarious together, resulting in lots of great moments that stand out more compared to the first two games. It's also great to see that Captain Quark has come full circle, as at the end he is finally able to think of someone else but himself and actually do something heroic. And lastly, Ratchet and Clank are a great duo that are very entertaining to watch, though it is kind of annoying that nobody recognizes Ratchet for his heroic deeds, only giving credit to Clank. He's an unemployed rocket mechanic who claims to have saved two galaxies, but most people know him as Secret Agent Clang's bumbling chauffeur. When you start playing up your arsenal, it's clear that this game focuses less on platforming and more on combat. And to make the shooting easier, the first thing you should do is choose the log strafe controls, which feels more like the traditional third person shooter controls. If you want to earn more bolts, you can do galactic ranger missions in which you need to defend or capture a base. There are also annihilation nation tournaments in which you either need to fight off waves of incoming enemies in a gladiator arena or do some platforming while evading dangerous traps. Another option is to go to Aquatos, collect sewer crystals in a sewer filled with amoeboids and hand them over to the plumber to get some bolts. Finally, there are Quark vid comics that retell Quark's history and his various clashes with Dr. Nefarious. This plays as a 2D side-scrolling platformer in which you play as Quark and by completing a comic you earn bolts and titanium bolts based on how many tokens you collected and your completion time. Since titanium bolts can only be used to buy cosmetics, I never really used them. But overall there are lots of ways to earn more bolts, so you no longer need to use glitches or annoyingly farm enemies for bolts like in the first game. Just like with the previous two games you can enter challenge mode after beating the game. And now that you can purchase mega versions of weapons, this gives you some incentive 
incentive to continue playing. And just like in Gone Commando, after beating the game, I immediately went to challenge mode and continued playing for another couple of hours. Which just shows the developers nailed this aspect with very addictive gunplay. Up your arsenal offers a total of 21 weapons of which 2 return from the first game. And 5 of these make a return from Gone Commando. Such as the plasma coil and the fan favorite bouncer. These can be purchased from Slim Cognito for free if you have a Gone Commando save file. You start out with your Omni Ranch and if you break Inferno Crit you can wield 2 flaming Omni Ranches to kill enemies in 1 hit. But since this means you will miss out on valuable experience for your firearms I hardly ever use the Omni Ranch. Aside from your melee weapon you started with a shotgun called the Shock Blaster and Grenade Launching Nitro Launcher. And throughout the game you can buy weapons from vendors. Aside from the returning weapons up your arsenal also includes new weapons. Such as the Annihilator which is your standard rocket launcher, the Disc Blade Gun that fires deadly rotating discs, the Flux Rifle which is a long range sniper rifle, the Hollow Shield Glove that allows you to deploy a defensive shield. This is without a doubt my least favorite weapon as I never found it all that useful and it is easily outclassed by the much better Shield Charger. Another underwhelming weapon is the Infector which brainwashes enemies to attack each other. But since I like to deal damage directly this ended up as one of my least used weapons. A new weapon that I use much more frequently is the N60 Storm that functions as your basic blaster weapon. If you like to fight enemies up close and personal you can pick the Plasma Whip. The Quacko Ray functions the same as the Morpho Ray and Sheep Penator, and as the name implies it turns enemies into ducks. The Rift Inducer fires black holes which suck up nearby enemies. The Spitting Hydra can lock onto enemies and electrocute them. And last but not least there's the third iteration of the Rhino. All weapons in this game can be upgraded up to level 5 which is 2 more levels than in Gone Commando. And if you go into challenge mode these weapons can even be upgraded to level 8. This means that you are constantly leveling up your weapons making the gunplay even more satisfying than Ratchet and Clank 2. And since almost all weapons are useful this motivates you to select another weapon as soon as you've leveled up the weapon that you were using. Which means you will have a powerful arsenal of weapons at the end of the game. Aside from weapons Ratchet automatically comes equipped with the Heli Pack, Hydro Pack and Thruster Pack. And a gravity and charge boots can be obtained. New to Ratchet's arsenal is the Terror Geist that turns Ratchet into a Terranoid which allows him to talk to these creatures in order to get past guarded entrances. Another addition is the Hypershot that combines the functions of the Dynamo and Swing Shot from Gone Commando, allowing you to create platforms and swing across long distances. Ratchet also gets a hacker gadget to open locked doors. While it is a step up from the hacking mini games of Gone Commando, it is still not that enjoyable. And I'm just glad when I've collected all the green snippets so I can enjoy the rest of the game. Aside from just walking around as usual, you also get access to two vehicles, which are the Turbo Slider and Hover Ship. The Turbo Slider is a four wheeled vehicle that has a back gun that is operated by Scrunch. The Hover Ship, on the other hand, allows you to fly and take out enemies from the sky. To break up the gun shooting sections, you also get to play as Clank again. Clank can again command gadget bots to attack enemies and unlock sealed doors. But this time he also gets a so called banana guided autonomous monkey device to fire bananas to lure scrunch to activate switches or distract enemies. And while on the movie set of Secret Agent Clank, Clank transforms into Giant Clank. And you get to shoot on helicopters, beat up giant ninjas and take down the terror of Telos. Compared to Ratchet 1 and 2, up your arsenal is much more linear with fewer deviating paths. Thus in the level design it also becomes apparent that the focus is much more on gunplay rather than platforming. Even though I really like the platforming sections in those games, I have to admit that I don't really miss it in this third installment. I estimate our odds at approximately 1 in 63 million, give or take. Hey, that's uh... Well, you know, not so bad. The multiplayer in Up Your Arsenal includes classic game modes such as Deathmatch and Capture the Flag. You can play with up to 4 friends via split screen multiplayer and online with a total of 8 players. Of course, since the servers are down, it's impossible to experience the online multiplayer. And I had no desire to play this with friends via split screen as there are better alternatives on the console. Sadly, this means that if you decide to play this game today, you will never be able to experience the entire package, as the multiplayer mode is a shell of its former self. Alright, now you're ready to get out there and kick some butt! Let's get to it, cadet! In terms of graphics, Up Your Arsenal has improved on its predecessor with character models and environments looking even more detailed. While the difference is not as huge compared to the difference between Ratchet 1 and 2, it is still noticeable. Unfortunately, the HUD is a step down, as I'm personally not a big fan of the orange-brown color, and I much prefer the blue HUD of Ratchet 2. The soundtrack of this game is fantastic, just like with the first two games, and the voice acting is so good that all characters stand out and are instantly recognizable. Miss Gears may be in league with Dr. Nefarious. Yeah, who knew? She always seems so sweet and innocent in her videos. Well, except for that one with the... You know what I mean? <clears throat> The first time I played Up Your Arsenal back in 2018, I found it very challenging in the last few hours. Which was because of one simple reason. The fact that I wasn't upgrading all of my weapons, only using a select few. What also didn't help was that I wasn't playing with locked strafe controls, which makes dodging incoming enemy fire more challenging. But now that I played Ratchet and Clank 3 again for this review and leveled up all of my weapons, the game was much less challenging and therefore less frustrating. Even though it still becomes more difficult towards the end, with enemies dealing a lot of damage being able to kill you with just a few hits. This new playstyle ultimately made the game a lot easier 
in the later levels and overall just more enjoyable. I'm slightly disappointed that the exploration has been toned down resulting in very linear planets. At the same time the gunplay is so good that it isn't a huge breaking point. You could say that Up Your Arsenal is the more gun oriented game, the first game gives you a more traditional exploration and platforming experience and finally Gohan Commando can be seen as the best of both worlds. Tonight we take a journey inside the enigmatic mind of our galaxy's foremost evil genius, Dr. Nefarious. We'll take a tour of this sacred facility on planet Dax, home to some of the galaxy's most insidious super weapons, including the dreaded rainbow Afrolyzer. Dr. Nefarious, we've all enjoyed your past work, but how do you respond to critics who say your latest galactic schemes are just more of the same? I will annihilate them! Lawrence, tell us a bit about this top secret super weapon being constructed on planet Dax. Well, super is such a strong word. For that matter, weapon may be a tad overdoing it. We do, however, have a lovely view of the ocean at sunset. Is Dr. Nefarious poised on the brink of galactic domination? Or is this super weapon just the latest in a series of maniacal pipe dreams? Stay tuned for more from Supervillain Weekly!